Kiflom, the Epsilon program returns. GTA 5 live action trailer revealed. And why next week will be the most exciting GTA 5 o'clock so far. Hi, welcome to this week's GTA 5 o'clock. I'm Tim Weaver. I'm here with our expert, Dan Dawkins. How are you doing, Dan? Yeah, very good. Uh, good, good. So we uh, are going to have quite a lean episode this week, Dan, but we're going to pack some stuff in and then at the end we're going to talk about something exciting that's coming up next week in very vague, slightly cryptic terms, unfortunately, but uh, it'll be worth it. So stay tuned. Dan, what have you got for us this week? Uh, this week we're looking at the return of the Epsilon project uh, in a new teaser video where there's a few things to say about that. We'll be talking about uh, stills that were taken from a photo shoot in Mexico City, which apparently people are claiming is to do with GTA 5, and we'll debunk that later on. And we'll also look at a imminent Take 2 investor call where many people are tipping it to be the unveiling of a PS4, Wii U and uh, Xbox 720 version. Again, we'll investigate that later on. Okay, cool. So uh, that sounds exciting. Don't forget that you can uh, follow us on Twitter. Uh, Dan, the address is... At GTA V O'Clock. Twitter's growing really fast, up to 1,400 people now. But please join in the community. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news. And believe me, there's a lot of news to come. Uh, you can also subscribe, if you haven't already, to this show uh, by clicking on the screen right now. Uh, and that's the sales pitch done, so we might as well crack on, Dan. Epsilon Project. We're going to tr attempt to play this. We've already looked at it to uh, assure you that we've uh, done our research. Uh, Dan, talk us through the Epsilon Project. Well, the Epsilon Project was revealed um, sometime last year. It started as a Twitter account, and there's like a bogus uh, homepage. And it's essentially a cult that parodies, I mean, pretty broadly, Scientology. Well, not even broadly, really, but directly. Yeah, OK, directly Scientology. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just aware of how litigious and dangerous Scientologists are, so I thought I'd try and use the word broadly, as yeah. if somehow that was some protection. Uh, but yeah, it's essentially like Scientology. Uh, this was a live Twitter account that was tweeting a lot of stuff, like sort of ridiculous factoid, factoids, such as things like, uh, fact, dinosaurs are a myth. And, you know, uh, mm. only you are stopping yourself from being happy and mm. all these various different things. Uh, now, this account stopped tweeting as of uh, late November last year. And in fact, only in last week's GTA 5 o'clock, we mentioned that it's weird that they haven't said anything for yeah. a while. Dun, dun, dun. Back to this week. Uh, the Epsilon Project is a go-go. Mm. Uh, and in fact, not only is the Twitter account back tweeting, and in fact, they tweeted something about them finally escaping from a lawsuit and being able to operate again but they've released a three minute screensaver which contains some interesting footage with some interesting phrases that we'll go through right now okay so it starts out with the 12 tenets of kiflom do we know actually what kiflom is is that just like their oh, i don't know what the equivalent in scientology is is it operating thetans or uh I don't know, right. and I'm still scared to say anything, Tim, because okay. of the way Scientology is. But, yeah, it's the 12 tenets of Kiflom, and we can go through them now, actually. In fact, it's the 12 goals of ep Epsilonism. One is, we are making an assault on happiness. This is kind of weird. I don't know what that uh, that eye thing is in the background, where they've... Um, they've is it is it some sort of like do do, do you assume that it's like they they getting down into your brain and kind of <laughs> <laughs> I've no idea I, I'm I'm scared to make any sort of concrete predictions about what a lot of this means but I think it's just supposed to be like creepy vaguely mystical uh, imagery that makes it sound like it makes sense where in fact it's all a giant load of nonsense mm. um, uh, you know and again I was going to say we could go through each tenant but you, you're quite capable of probably reading them on screen yeah uh, and plus I can't read fast enough to make any sensible comment as they appear <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah the the trail is essentially like lots of blue skies it's got a very religious feel to it um, what's interesting and a lot of people have noted is that the visuals in the background probably aren't CGI or stock footage but you know might be footage mm. from the game because it's showing like active like 24 hour real time style weather systems which as we know is going to play a key part in GTA 5 yeah do you think Tim like these visuals look achievable given what we've seen yeah I do I mean I, th I don't think in the background there they're not they're not 
it's not anything that we haven't seen on this generation of consoles already. I mean, so I think it's perfectly possible that's been taken from, in, you know, the in-game environment. What makes me think that it definitely is in-game footage in the back is that later on in this video, a, a character, presumably the leader of uh, the Epsilon program, yeah. appears on screen, and he definitely is an in-game model. Um, because this, you know, the woman that keeps coming from left to yeah. right in a quite creepy way yeah. is is hand drawn, you know. But the one, the guy that pops up later, is um, is definitely he, he definitely looks like a an in game model to me. Um, so I would say that it's almost certainly taken from um, taken from in game footage. We're just trying to find that bit now. Here he comes now. Here he comes. That's definitely an in game model. Yeah, it is. Uh, and it would also cement the fact that everything you're seeing is produced with the GTA 5 engine. Yeah. Uh, and in which case, wow, yeah. doesn't the water look good? The water looks amazing. Wow, doesn't the sun rippling over the water also look good? And again, you know, the rolling clouds and everything, it's just a real leap up from what we've seen in previous GTA games. It's also quite a sneaky and, and quite a fun sort of way of, of getting people to... Glimpse, glimpse footage of GTA or what would become, you know, part make up part of GTA in the in the sort of wider context of a of a apparently not related to GTA in any way kind of advert. You know, I think that's quite quite nice. So when you look closely, you can actually glimpse the GTA world in the background there. But in the meantime, they're kind of building the um, this sort of yeah, religion. Yeah, Rockstar are, are brilliant at viral. Um, stuff you know and again maybe the bar's been raised recently by uh, a game like Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain and Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes in fact that's a really interesting take on the nature of a viral um, but yeah Rockstar have traditionally always been very good at this stuff and I see people were retweeting on our Twitter account the Fruit Computers mm. website this week but in fact that was the Fruit Computers website from GTA 4 right. so that's not Fruit computers have existed within the GTA universe, but there's not a current new viral push on fruit computers. Uh, someone else pushed me towards saying the Six Figure Temp site was active, but it was only active in the way that there was a squatter there trying to sell me life insurance <laughs> right, okay. uh, with the pretend GTA 5 demo link, but it's it's nonsense, you know, so that's not going yet. But the Epsilon program definitely is. So just on the subject of the Epsilon program, Dan, I mean, do we know who that guy is and do we know anything more about the, how the program will kind of interact with the wider world of Los, Santo, Los Santos? Uh, yeah, the information on the guy is, um, it's all on the website, you can read all about it. In terms of the game, um, I mean, he's almost certainly a character in the game, isn't he? And like, almost likely to be someone you interact with in a mission mm. um, I wouldn't want to speculate too much if, if it means much more than something quite throwaway yeah. but I don't think for example you'll become indoctrinated and it will change every single one of your value sets within the game mm. but I think you'll be a character it's just another you know prism to view the madness of modern Hollywood and the modern world and people trying to find sanity in bizarre things. I just wonder whether it might have some wider I mean, this is pure speculation, obviously, but I wonder whether it might have some wider context in that, you know, like, it is so closely based on Scientology, and Scientology is, as we all know, a very wealthy religion, you know, mm. and, and the, the game is about money, and yeah. it is about um, losing money, but mostly about uh, accruing money, you know, sometimes through illegal means, and whether, you know, it, the, the Epsilon project uh, pro program might play some wider role in perhaps a mission, I don't know, perhaps... This guy who, who who runs it, maybe he's on the take, or maybe you know the guys, the three characters kind of interact with. Oh him. yeah, yeah, definitely. You uh, know, I, I agree with all of that. I think he, he's going to appear. I think again, you know, there'll be people throughout GTA Five trying to make money any which way they can, and Rockstar will be trying to sort of examine and lampoon a lot of that. And one of the key threads will be quasi fakey religion stuff and mm. hokum. And in fact, again, in the in the rush casting call that we keep referring back to. There's reference to a lot of characters who live out in the sticks uh, near where Trevor lives, who, particularly this guy Nervous Jerry, who's a paranoiac, and there's other characters who are like into spiritualism and this kind of belief. Oh, that's right, yeah, yeah, of course. So, you know, again, this could all tie into, uh, you know, Kiflom and the Epsilon program. We'll just have to see.
Okay, so that's um, our. Uh, we kicked things off with a bit of a uh, bit of religion. Now we're moving on to live action trailers, Dan. Yeah, uh, maybe not quite so much religion in this. Uh, over the weekend, uh, a member of Reddit posted uh, a series of snaps that he claims were of a live action TV commercial being shot near him in Mexico City. Um, these shots aren't like overtly clear to be GTA 5, but in one of the snaps, there's a GTA 5 logo that's like almost but not quite accurate to what we've seen mm. uh, plus there's like scenes of sort of devastation car crashes it's like a sort of hyper extreme street scene from you'd imagine to be in GTA mm. uh, so obviously everyone on the internet leapt on it and said ah oh, Rockstar shooting a live action TV commercial um, the thread discussing it on GTA forums was locked Rockstar I think have come out and said no it's basically not and people in now saying that it's a Sony commercial. So, I mean, I guess if you were to examine that tenant and say, yes, it is a Sony commercial, well, it's a Sony commercial for what? Like for PS3? Uh, and again, mm. you know, is it like a PS3 umbrella brand commercial celebrating the breadth of games still available on PS3? In which case, you know, one of the backgrounds might be GTA 5, because you'd obviously want to share about that being available on PS3. Um, some people have gone through this individual frames and pulled out some fairly spurious references to what each bit might represent in terms of different games. Some of them are saying that the uh, image we see with the sort of foliage and the trees and there's one car in it represents the overgrown world of The Last of Us. Right. Now, you know, it could... It could uh, be that, I guess. I don't know, and I guess they're saying that you know the the broken street tells a story of Sony's lineup. Um, so that would be the Last of Us. Further down, there's dudes in hoodies walking down the street. Now, someone's suggesting that dudes in hoodies is infamous. Oh right, yeah. So possibly, like that's the case. Um, and there's also an image of a man who, who, to be quite honest, looked a lot like Michael. Um, we haven't got this image in front of us, but you should have it on screen. Um, and again something about all of it doesn't quite ring true for me as in I don't think it's a GTA 5 ad but then I'm also not entirely convinced it's Sony I guess I guess well if you look at it logically um, if it was a if it was an actual ad for GTA 5 I mean what, why would they film it in Mexico City why wouldn't they film it in LA with the sort of you know, like this, the sense of place and the. Well, I I say for that's that's the same reason as uh, when in the Simpsons when Mr. Burns <laughs> a commissions a director to make a biopic of his own life, and uh, he goes find me the cheapest non-union Mexican equivalent of Steven Spielberg. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. And they get Senor Spielberg in, who, who's like you know willing to do everything that Spielberg would do, but <laughs> on the cheap. And I think it's probably purely because cost. logistically, it's cost and logistics of getting a proper LA street, smashing it up and being able to afford yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, there is there is that, I guess, yeah. So it's just, I mean, it seems to, in, in none of these shots, and I know you can do a lot in post-processing and with the these amazing special special effects people talk about these days. Yeah. You know, you can do a lot and you can do a lot afterwards with that. So maybe it won't look so much, but it doesn't look like an LA street to me, you know, so... The Sony thing kind of it makes a bit more sense it, if you were to go around that route only because that might explain why you'd have a f sort of poster of GTA Five on the wall. Yeah, you know, it makes no sense in the context of a GTA Five live action no. thing to be promoting itself within the world. It's yeah. too meta and too weird. Yeah, I do agree. It's I don't know for a fact that it's Sony, but like you say, it ties up. Something that is interesting is if people are saying that all oh, right, The Last of Us is definitely PS Three. That's fine. Uh, GTA 5 is definitely PS3, that's fine. Infamous, it's played its hand on PS3 now. And in fact, we, the only Infamous game we know is coming is on PS4. So I wonder if, is, you know, this is a, a wild influence. Uh, one is that, you know, Sony are umbrella advertising Sony, the world of Sony and the brand. Or two, is this a live action ad for PS4? Mm. And in which case, the presence of a GTA 5 logo would be a bit dun 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 but 
that's massive speculation on my part. And actually, Dan, that last point leads on to your next point quite nicely. Ah, oh, yes, a nice little segue. And I don't just mean the wonderful two-wheeled device that you can get about your large palatial mansion with. Um, on May the 16th, Rockstar a tipped... Is it May the 16th, Tim? Have I gone mad? Uh, May the 13th? Anyway, May. Take two, who own Rockstar, are due for one of their big investor conference calls when they discuss results and projections. Um, and people are sort of saying that this is a good time for Rockstar to confirm whether they're working on other versions of GTA V, um, including, you know, let's say a PS4 version, an Xbox 720 version, and some are saying a Wii U version. Well, I mean, I don't know this, but I would be absolutely flabbergasted if there was a Wii U version. I, I think the chances of that are precisely zero. Yeah, I, I, I would... Yeah, i basically say zero. I was going to say, like, 0.1, given the fact that the console actually exists and so does the game, but I think there's just literally no chance. I mean, you know, Rockstar haven't had... Apart from Chinatown Wars, Rockstar haven't had a grand tradition of supporting any major Nintendo formats. Uh, I should know, because I worked on N64 and GameCube mm. mags back in the day, and we were desperate for GTA to uh, come over, and it never made over... Uh, never supported. I don't think. I don't think GTA was on Wii. Um, no, it wasn't on Wii. And I, I. I mean, Wii U is in a pretty terrible place at the moment, and isn't in enough people's hands. And I just can't see. I can't see that happening. I just can't see it. I, I, maybe, maybe I'll maybe I'll be proved horribly wrong, but I think you know, like you can see that you can see the business and financial financial sense in in doing a next gen version of GTA. You can. Easily. I mean that yeah. makes complete sense, you know. And by next yeah. gen, I of course mean PS4 and Xbox Next Stroke 720. But Wii U, I, I can't, I can't see where the sense is in that. No, I mean the, the thing is, the reason in that you know I and we are pretty convinced that there'll be next gen console versions. And again, to clarify, we do not mean in replacement of the PS3 and 360 versions. The game is definitely coming out on PS3 and 360 on September the 17th as far as we know because that's what Rockstar have said what we're saying is it could be at some stage possibly up to six months down the line Rockstar may create a ported version of you know GTA 5 for PS4 and next gen systems because history suggests there's a precedent for this because when GTA 4 came out on PS3 and 360 which was in April in December of the same year, they brought out the PC versions. There was a five to six month gap between the two. And if you were to extrapolate that out again, you'd be looking at a PS4 version at around about March-ish mm -hmm. uh, in 2014. Mm -hmm. Is that right, Grief? I'm losing track of time. Yep. Um, and essentially, if they make a PC version, they may as well make a PS4 and Xbox version because from everything we know or hear about the Xbox, they essentially are PCs and you're, you're working essentially with the same code. With Wii U, it's a completely different machine. Mm. One with a unique and sort of bizarre functionality. So mm. they'd have to code like a unique map to go on the handset and everything. And I just simply don't think that's going to happen for the size of the install base. Unless Nintendo pony up an absolutely astonishing amount of money. Which won't happen. And even then, I think there's a resource commitment of, right then, where's our spare 200 men who are going to make the Wii U version? Yeah, I mean, you think about... Yeah, exactly. I mean, you think about how uh, how much Microsoft reportedly paid for the DLC alone for um, you know, Lost and Damned mm. and, and Battle mm. of Gay Tony. And, I mean, yeah, t uh, Nintendo would have to... Because Rockstar, I don't think Rock... I mean, I, Rockstar will know whether this is true or not, but I just cannot see... Rockstar turning up at Nintendo HQ and saying, "Hey, we'd really, really love to do a GTA version of GTA 5." What you know, like you say, the the if if anything was going to happen, it would be Nintendo turning up to Rockstar and saying, "We'd really, really love you to do a version of GTA 5." And in which case, as you say, it requires them to front up a ton of money, and that's just not how Nintendo work. Oh. You know, they've never worked like that. In, in my experience, they've never worked like that, and. That's why I don't think there'll be a Wii U version. But the next gen versions, we know, as you say, that PS4 is basically a PC. PC. It makes a lot of sense. So, 
So we thinking that we think the the the, the rumor is that that they may be announcing it in this this conference. Well, I, I, to, or, or to to be clear, inferring. to be yeah. clear, I I think, and as as we've said from the very first episode of GTA Five o'clock, I think there will be a PS4 version of GTA Five somewhere down the line. I am not convinced that this will be the place where they'll announce it. They're certainly not about to announce an Xbox 720 version before Microsoft have even announced their own console. Yeah. Now, obviously, given these time frames we're talking about, M- Microsoft might have come out by then and said, this is what we're doing. So maybe they're in a place where they can sort of publicly, via the phone call, disclose it. Yeah. But I'd have thought they'd probably want to make more of a song and dance of it, or maybe a platform holder would want to shout about it, at possibly at E3. I'm not saying, I don't think, for, it's not for a fact we're going to see it in this investor call. Do you? I mean, do you think that it, that from Rockstar's point of view, if say say they were making a next gen version of, of the game, do you think from Rockstar's point of view, it wouldn't would it be in their interest to kind of start talking about the next gen version of the game prior to the release of the game? Well, not at all. Yeah. So I wonder whether that might we might not even hear anything about a potential next gen version until after the Xbox 360 and PS3 versions have come out. Yeah, I quite agree. It's only like you know we, we've had this discussion internally of you know what if it came out on the next gen consoles, would you buy it now? And I think most of us said yeah, we would buy it now because you just want to play it as soon as you can. Yeah. But at the same time, part of your brain goes, oh man, they have to play it in super HD yeah. with like minimal loading times, you know. So I don't I don't think Rockstar would want to come out and make it official yet. Okay, Dan, so that's um, all the news, I think, from this week. Uh, apart from one big piece of news, which you're going to have to talk cryptically about. Yeah, I've got to be really careful what I say here. Basically, I would, with the utmost urgency, recommend that you subscribe right now by clicking the subscribe button on screen or clicking the subscribe button below. I cannot say why. And I know you might think this is some giant bluff and we've been teasing this for weeks. It's just a really exciting time for GTA 5 and for GTA 5 o'clock. And I think over the next week or so, we're going to see some things that you'll be really glad you're tuned in for. And I'd also urge you to subscribe to the Twitter account at GTA V O'Clock. I know I'm plugging this shamelessly, I know it's awful, but you will thank me and us in due time. I just can't say any more, Tim. No, we can't say any more. Um, I just literally can't say any more. So, um, but we do, we do advise you to do that. This isn't some big play. We we genuinely mean that it it will be worth your while. So do do that. We've kept this one short this week because we've got to go and plan some stuff. <laughs> uh, and uh, and. <laughs> The, the next few episodes of GTA 5 o'clock will be back to the normal length and there'll be lots of exciting stuff to talk about. So thank you for tuning in this week. Do put your uh, comments uh, below here. Do subscribe. Do follow us on Twitter. And we'll be back again next week, Dan. Not on Wednesday. I can neither confirm or deny if that's true, Tim. We may arrive at an irregular time schedule. That's why you need to be subscribed. Because when we arrive, you'll want to know about it. Okay, we'll see you next week. Goodbye.